name is Tip Toland and I uh, live in Seattle, Washington and I've been working in clay for since 19, mm, 1980, very, very um, intensely since 1980. And I choose the human figure because I can't, I've always been fascinated with the figure. I've never really been interested in anything but the figure. So even when I was a kid, all I did was doodle, draw the human figure in, in as many ways as I could think of as to describe the eyes, the nose, the mouth, so particularly the face. But the gesture of the human figure was equally as important, but just the details of the face um, interested me most. The technique is, is that I work in solid clay on a metal pipe armature and uh, so that I don't have to think about uh, denting the clay. If you had to coil up the clay, you would always be worried about uh, pushing in too far. But I guess I work in a traditional sculptural way that like European, it's more the European traditional way of approaching the figure where it's just solid on an armature, then usually that was, uh, mo take, a mold was taken off of that. But I don't do that. I'm just interested in the solid figure and then just kind of working it out, then cutting it when it's leather hard, dry, taking it off the armature, hollowing it. So in a life-size human figure, it means many cuts, cut here, cut here, cut here, cut here, all the limbs cut in many pieces, hollowed out, put back together uh, with slip and scoring. Then it slowly dries, then it's fired. And then after firing, I, um, I, um, I, I sand it very, very well. I prime it with a house paint and then I paint it with a house paint. Then after I paint it, and the painting it re involves toothbrush, little flecking, mist all over the figures. And then after that is done, I use a dry chalk pastel with a dry brush just to paint in some of the, the, the red areas, the veins, things like that. Then I put a matte spray fixative over all of it and the last touch is clear nail polish on the eyes for glint and wax on the fingernails. I want to increase the scale sometimes so that it really confronts the viewer so that you are uh, in front when you're in front of a head that is this big you almost can't see around the head it takes up your whole point of view and I want you to have that level of confrontation. It's important to me usually about the subject matter is uh, requires in my feeling that you it requires that kind of confrontation. If it doesn't require confrontation and I uh, and I make the scale smaller, it's usually so that I so that it, you can put a little distance between yourself and the figure. You can make it sort of more of a concept than what you see the figure doing rather than a one-to-one -one, uh, scale um, interaction. Most of my figures are life-size, so you'd have a one-to-one. -one. But I minimize sometimes the figure so it gives you a little bit more room to think of them as an idea or concept and not a real human. So I think why I choose the elderly, I often choose sometimes uh, the very young as well. But it's true, most of my figures are old. And I love the, it's like a topography to me the face, the wrinkles, it's like a, a map. And there's something about the aging process where everything begins to 
gravity takes hold, they begin to droop, um, and the expression that they've held for a great deal of their life, maybe they've been mad or maybe happy or maybe um, just look always a little bit sad and perplexed, often freezes on their face after they've done it so many times. It's like they've lived with that expression so much that it has become them. They, can't, they don't go back to just nor innocence anymore. So that particularly speaks to me. It's like a biography of the life they've lived, their wrinkles and such. Oh, we have to hollow out all, get rid of all of this clay in here. Otherwise, you cannot fire it. You could fire it, but it would take weeks to fire it. It would be very heavy and uh, it would probably explode. So you want to get all of the clay out of the head, then put it back on together and let it dry slowly. That way, um, the walls are only this thick, you know, all the way, and it, it can dry properly. And uh, if I didn't ever, if I didn't um, hollow it, and I just uh, put it in the kiln this way, I think it would crack. It wouldn't. Uh, it would crack on the pipe because it wants to shrink, and the pipe won't let it. So it would. It would crack and probably blow up. I really like the details, so I take extra time with them. Well, I'm just trying to get her face really accurate. When I left the workshop, I, I, put, I put in this expression, I pushed these eyebrows down so sh I could give some expression into the face and so but I didn't uh, I didn't fill in all of the fleshiness of the face so that's what I'm doing over here I'm wanting to I only really filled in this side of the face so I thought okay now now we'll do this side of the face the way I work is we just start with the the mapping of the features and then where they go and then I show how actually I create an eye, a nose, a mouth, a chin, but all the rest of the face is not yet uh, uh, finished or filled in so it's just flat. So uh, right before we leave, uh, I leave, I filled in the face for so everybody could see. but. Um, so now I have to do this side of the face. It's just a matter of coil. Now I'm going to use this as my model for this side. Emotions, I wanting to get at this one is like a, a little bit a pleading, like a little bit of a pleading look, like oh please, as if the character is saying, please. <laughs> to 
give to the Biennale were two uh, twice life size uh, people with uh, albinism, African children with albinism. And I came by that subject matter. Well, first I should say that there's, there were originally five busts with albinism and uh, they have been sold. But I wish all five could have been included in the Biennale, but only two were left to be able to have over here. So, but it was an installation for me, portraits of people who had suffered horrible, um, horrible interactions, mostly from East Africa, because of people, they were the subjects of people coming into their homes in their villages at night and hacking off their limbs because their limbs were thought to have good luck properties or, and then they were being then given to the uh, witch doctors that would pay them a great deal of money for the limbs of people with albinism. And so um, uh, it just was such a horrific subject and I was very drawn to it. I was repelled and I thought, I'm really not the person to make these portraits of these people. But I couldn't, it, the subject wouldn't let go of me. It kept wanting me to make their portrait. So I thought, all right, I will do this. And uh, the installation was five busts along with a 10 foot long figure of a woman I, I called Africa, who was awakening and listening to the cries of her white children. And so hopefully, maybe by bringing those two pieces to the Biennale, it will create awareness of what's going on, mostly East Africa. There's a Visiting the National Palace Museum uh, was such an eye-opener for me. And I saw the extent and the incredible history of ceramics in Asia, uh, starting way back before Christ, and how much time and magnificent craftsmanship went into each piece and the seriousness of Taiwanese people to ceramics has left a big impression on me also. I think it's, uh, I really respect this culture and I really feel so supported by people here and the whole culture to take ceramics seriously as an art form. and. Uh, so I, much more so than say, America. America kind of is like a, a hobby. Clay is a nice hobby. Not always, I mean, not really, but it's really not considered as fine of an art as sculpture, and painting, and what have you. It's still, it's still coming into its own. Um, but I love the Biennale for that reason, and Ting Chu Shao for starting with Peter Volkis and Soldner along with Hayashi and including everybody together in the overall birthing of the modern age of ceramics. It's a beautiful show for that. Anyway, uh, so I was very honored to be part of that show and uh, just uh, honored to be here in Taiwan in this residency. I'm very grateful for it.